I, I mentioned that I was starting to speed up and I'm speeding up and speeding up so fast, Randy, I, I recognize that I'm actually going faster than the speed of light. Mm. And the moment that I realize that, my human mind says, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I started to feel uncomfortable with that. Well, if you can't do that, it's like breaking the law, right? So I'm starting to feel uncomfortable with that, right? So you're like so, Superman at this point, just faster <laughs> than a speeding bullet. Exactly. And, but the moment that I felt this discomfort, I felt myself starting to slow down. Now, just a little bit, not a lot, just enough to where I felt like, okay, I can, I can handle that. That's okay. Just not that faster than light thing. Let's, <laughs> let's wait on that. <laughs> so I'm still going very fast. Now, when, so this tunnel, the tunnel itself is, you, you can also see beyond it. It's like semi-transparent as well. So I can see outside of it. Uh, so in the little spaces between the angels, there's, you can see through this. And I'm going so fast through there that the planets, galaxies, and everything outside, because I'm still in space, are going by, they're like streaking by, they're like streaks, just like you would see in a Star Trek episode. Uh, and, and, and it really was like that, uh, where you see the that, that type of thing where they're going by. And so I can see that, but it's really, again, focusing me on this end. And so I then, am able to see at this point, this exit, this funnel that opens out this other way, right? And it opens out into this completely different realm. Mm. There's like, it, it's like a barrier, uh, and you go from one space, one type of space, into a completely different type of space. And that's where this star is, right? And uh, so I'm still contemplating it, and I'm contemplating it, and I'm seeing it. And it's growing and growing and growing and increasing in in light value, I, it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter, and till it's brighter than 10,000 suns. I know it's that bright. And, and, and so here at this moment that it's getting so bright, I, for lack of a better term, I burst through this barrier, through the end of the uh, funnel from this other side into this realm, this realm of light. And, uh, and, and that's the only way I could say it was like, it, it was like, so I'm traveling, I'm traveling along and then yeah, that, that's what I go, like it just burst into this place. Like a, and, like a starburst of light, just, is that what you're explaining? Just you go from, from this place that oh, sounds yeah. like a, almost like a spiral galaxy and <laughs> a burst of light. It, well, it is, it, and that's the only way that I can explain how I enter this realm and what it felt like. And so the, the realm of light and, and, and so the, what's important is that here is this star and it is completely just overtaken my vision. It's a huge, what I think again is a star. It is so bright and it's pure and white. It's when I say white, it's just no way to be able to express 
what this white is. If you were to see here on this earth, just this beautiful new fallen snow, and we think that is so white and, and, and clean and bright, that would be like dancing through the mud in comparison to this, mm. because it's just, it, there isn't a comparison. It, it doesn't exist in this world. It is completely, truly otherworldly. And so I'm ta taking it in and the beauty of it, the beauty of it, it is stunningly beautiful. And I'm just taken over with the beauty. And, and I'm just trying to take it in and I'm still traveling towards it though. And, and I'm seeing this and I, I'm seeing this light and I'm thinking about the purity of it and the, and the wonder of it. And I'm thinking like, but there's more to it. It's not just a light. This is a living light. Mm. This light is alive. And the, so that knowledge comes to me and I'm still, I'm like, and then I look down into the center of this light and I make out the form of a man. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, oh, there's, and, and I can't see the actual features of the man right now because it's so bright. I can just make out the outline of a man. And the arms of this man are outstretched like this. And uh, I, I, just, like, just like they were, somebody is reaching out to welcome you, to hug you, right? That's what this is like. And I'm seeing this, and then I recognize, wait a minute. This man is not in this light. The light is coming out of the man and it's pouring out of him. And at the moment I make that realization, Randy, I entered this light. Now I have to say entered because there was, and I don't know how to explain this, but there is a boundary, a boundary to this light that is separate from the light of the realm itself. And, and I can differentiate that. I can see the difference. I can see this boundary. And when I break that boundary, I enter the light. And at the exact same time, the light is entering me. And at that moment, I am being filled with the light of God. Let me explain a little bit more about that. It was like I was a container, an empty container. And you know how, uh, you know about water balloons and, and you know, when you, you, you fill them with water, they, they initially takes the shape and it, it starts to, you know, expand as, as you put more and more water in it. And, uh, and so that's what I'm, feeling like I'm feeling like I am this empty container and I am being filled up with this love of God and, and it's starting I'm starting to expand I'm I'm feeling it it's this pressure and this pressure is from inside of me coming out mm -hmm. and I'm expanding and expanding and expanding 
And I'm thinking, I could just explode from the pressure of it. Wayne, and, I'm getting a picture of a new wine skin, you know, from the Bible, the wine, the wine, and the, you have a new wine skin and just expanding out with the, the wine being the representative of, uh, of the Lord Jesus. That's, that's, that's a very apt, uh, uh, you know, uh, example. And, and, and thinking about it now, that's exactly what it was. So I'm sitting there and almost as I feel like I'm exploding, then suddenly I feel the pressure start to release on me just a little bit. And then I hollered out, no, don't stop. Give me all you got. And so, <laughs> and then I heard Jesus chuckle. And he starts <laughs> filling me back up, but he's filling me back up to as much as he knows I'm able to stand. Mm. And so there's two things. How do I know it was Jesus? Well, when I had that light entering me, I had this immediate knowledge, this instant, undeniably true knowledge. This is Jesus. This is God. This, this is the creator of everything. I knew this to be true. It was a knowledge where you know that you know that you know. It is so deep, so unquestionable. Yep, that's the truth. This is Jesus. And so with, with that, I, uh, I will continue on with that for just a minute. But that's how I knew it was Jesus. And uh, so, but I need to tell you about this love of God. Mm. So I'm being filled with him, with his love. He is love. And so I'm being filled with him. I'm not knowing that at this point, but it, it was absolutely stunningly amazing to me. Randy, we think we know what love is here on this earth. We can love our spouse. We can love our children. We can love our friends. We, 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 and, and, and even if it is the highest experience that we can have of that earthly love, it is a shadow in comparison to what this is. It was rapturous. It was joyful. It was blissful. It, 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 it was ecstatic. It was all of these adjectives and more. If we were to then take all of those adjectives that we can come and to express the, the highest example or the highest experience of love that we could ever possibly have on this earth, in this life, wrap them all up together into one little gift and multiply it times a billion. And that would be only the beginning, Randy. This, this love was infinite. If, if we were to experience that one billion times level of all of this, we are only beginning to experience the depth of the love of God. And I was enraptured. I, I did not want that to stop. That's why I wanted all he could give me. My goodness. I wanted that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And 
So then I start asking all of these questions, uh, these questions about, you know, the, uh, wait a minute. Okay, so this is God. So I'm, I'm wanting to ask God, I'm wanting to ask Jesus all of these things. I want this knowledge uh, about things. Uh, you know, what, what is the meaning of life? What is truth? What is, uh, you know, just all of these different things. What is the ultimate goal in, in things? Everything, just everything you can think of from the most mundane to the most existential or philosophical, everything in between. And he answered every one of them. And let me tell you about these answers because it was so amazing. When Jesus answers a question, he answers it completely. You know, like we're having this discussion today and you ask questions because you're wanting to find out more to get to get a greater understanding about the experience that happened to me, right? And so as you, as you do that, you get a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Well, that's the way we do it, right? Until we've asked all the questions that we want to have about a particular topic in which we feel we've got a complete answer or an answer that satisfies us, right? But when Jesus answers a question, it is answered in completeness. It is a complete volume of information that has every possible connection. Every He has thought of and already considered every possible other question you could ask about it, every other connection or something that might be tangential to it. He has considered all of that. And when you ask your question, he gives that complete answer instantaneously to you as a complete volume. You don't have to ask anything else about it. He has given you a complete answer. And I'm asking questions. I'm asking questions and I'm asking questions. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm just asking so many. And, but then I, I said, wait a minute, all of this stuff about you, this is true. And, I, and, and so all of my questions are surrounded about that. Now, what's very important to remember, and this is the thing. So I was given answers to libraries full of information that it would take, I don't know how many libraries to fill. But I was not allowed to come back with all of that information. Uh, I didn't know why at, at the time, but there was some specific information and relative information to all of those questions and answers that I got that I did come back with. And the answers ultimately to all of the questions in life is Jesus. You know, and, and, and I don't say that as, as some kind of just like a uh, cliche saying, everything we experience, everything we go through, everything that is built in us, everything that we, uh, any loss or any gain, anything, it's all for Jesus. It's all to lead us to Jesus. It's all to glorify Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Yes. And so I, I knew that. And this what you're saying, Wayne, is so aligned with uh, the Bible, the scriptures. In the beginning was the word, and the word became flesh. The word is Jesus, and also he describes himself as the truth. And that's one thing that I've heard a number of people, including yours truly, have said that, you know, I had all of these questions, and I knew the person who had all of the answers, but I didn't need any longer uh, the need to have those questions answered because I knew uh, that Jesus held those answers and that sufficed for, 
for my need to, to just be with the answer himself. So true, so true. And you mentioned something that I think is so powerful and so important here as it relates to the word, because when I understood that this is Jesus, that this is God, I also had entering into my spirit this other piece of knowledge that this is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, Randy, as you, as you know, as we've discussed this, I didn't even know that was a scripture. I had only been <laughs> saved for seven days. But that was completely true and undeniably true. And now, of course, like I said, I, I found out later, of course, when I get into his word, I find out, of course, that that's in fact the case. But John 14, 6, and he continues, and no one comes to the Father but through me. Exactly. And that also happened here as well. Uh, when I'm asking all of these questions and I find out that Jesus is the answer to them all. And I said, then all of everything about you is true. Everything written about you is true. Then everything about the cross, that's also true. And in that moment, Randy, I was transported to that very place. I was transported to that moment in time on earth where Jesus is actually being crucified. I'm right there at the front looking oh at my. him on the cross. Oh my. And he and he was almost unrecognizable. Mm. He was beaten so badly. Mm. I'm sitting here looking at this, and it's a, like a 360 degrees. I'm completely there, and I'm seeing him on the cross, and I'm uh. stunned. I'm stunned, Randy. Oh, I'm man. just stunned, and I'm looking at it, and it's not just the vision of it. It's not just me being there. I'm actually there. there. I know that I'm actually there. Mm. And at the same time, I'm actually able to hear his thoughts while he's on the cross, what he's thinking. Wow. And I, oh, Randy, okay, this is going to be the tough one for me, but I got to tell you this. As I'm sitting here and I'm looking at him on the cross. I get from him that he loves me so much that if I was the only person in all of creation, the billions of people that have existed or existing now, if I was the only one in all of history that ever would have said yes to him. He would have gone to that cross. He would have suffered like I'm watching him suffer right now. He would have done that just for me. Just for me, Brandy. Amen. And I was broken. I was just crushed. I would just Oh my goodness. How how do you how do you how do you just receive something like that and the truth of it it was absolutely unquestionably true. And I was thinking I know how I am. I know how broken of a person I am. I couldn't do anything even close to that. And here, I know 
know that you would have done this just for me. And I also knew the truth, the very same truth, that he would also do that for every single person that ever existed. Yes. You and me, Randy, every single person. This God is so personal, and he wants so badly to have a personal, intimate relationship with each one of us. That he went to that cross just so we could do that. Yes. I was slayed. I couldn't. Mm. My goodness. My goodness. And uh, I then, had, when I could compose myself, I started asking more questions and more questions and more questions. I wanted to know everything I could about this God, this king, this man who did all of this for me. I wanted to know all about him. And so I was asking questions, you know, rapid fire, bang, 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 bang. I was doing all of that. And then Jesus chuckled again. He, he was amused that I was just asking all of these questions. And he was happy to answer them all, Randy. And at that moment, then I had this recognition that right beside Jesus is the Father. Now, I mean, now I'm not able to see his form. It, it, it's just, just invisible to me. I can see Jesus and I know that he's there and I know that the father is there right beside him, but I just can't make out the physical form. I can interact with the father. I can talk to the father. I can hear the father. I'm just not able to physically see him, but it didn't make any difference, right? And I know it's those same invisible hands of that father is the one that picked me up and brought me uh, into uh, the presence of Jesus. And I'm just thinking about this all and I'm contemplating where I'm at. This heavenly place that I'm in, and I'm here. God. And suddenly I'm filled with this knowledge, this feeling, this is home. This is my home. And, and, and so the way I explain it, it's, it's, it's suddenly, it's like when you go on a camping trip and, and it's, I, I I, you know, coming from East Texas, of course, I, I love to go camping and, and to be able to go out and commune with nature and, and you build your campfires and you cook the food over the fire and you spend time with uh, either with yourself or with friends or whatever. And it's always very nice to do that. And, uh, but it's also after you spend about a week or so out in the bush, it's also very nice to come home, to sleep in your own bed, to take a warm shower and wash off all the grime and the dirt. And you, you, know, and you think to yourself, that was a nice trip. I loved being able to go out there, but it's always so much nicer to come home. And here I was, Randy, I was home. And I knew it. I felt like I had come back home, like I was back from the camping trip. And I, I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking like, but there's something unusual about this one. I, I kind of have this feeling, wait a minute, can I stay? Here. That's what I'm thinking to myself. And so then I turned back to Jesus and the Father. 
And I said, can I stay? And if they both in unison at the same time, they both say no, just one word, no. Now, this no was a loving no, but it was a firm no. And, and, and the voice of the father was earth crumblingly powerful. Mm. The very essence of my soul was shaking from the power of it. It was still a loving no, but the power was so beyond measurable that it just shook me to the core. Mm. I don't know at the same time. Mm. And I knew at that moment, there was no arguing with them. There was no trying to come up with some clever retort, you know, like, come on, man, you know, thank you guys. This is my home. You know, it's my home. I can stay here, right? <laughs> no, there was nothing like that. They said no, they meant no, and I knew it. And the moment that that recognition it, it came into me, and I started to pull back, and I pulled back out of the light, and, and so, and I'm going backwards, right? Mm. And then I pass this boundary, where the, the light that is Jesus is separate into the realm where I'm at, this, this uh, heavenly realm that I'm in. And, and then I'm going backwards. Well, I can see that, that there's the opening of the funnel that I had come in and I'm going back. So now, like when I came in here, I'm coming head first. Now I'm going feet first to go back. And so I end up feet first and I am feeling this level of disappointment. Mm. I'm home. I'm, I'm just, I wanted to stay. Yeah. Who can, having been in that position, would ever not want to stay? You want to stay. You, Did you ever you question, just, Wayne, uh, why? Or well, I ended up. Any I ended up finding out, and ultimately, uh, what the deal was, uh, and, and the short answer is because I would tell everyone. Um, the and from the moment I came back, I have not stopped. From the instant I came back, I started telling people. And so that was really one of the things, because when I was with Jesus and I'm asking all of these questions, there was an urgency as well for me to come back and to tell them because his coming, his return was so soon. And he wanted me to tell as many people as possible about him and his return. And, uh, and so that's, you know, that is exactly what the, what the deal was. I'm coming back with the message of Jesus. And now it, you'll have to forgive me because it wasn't like I was ignoring everybody else. It wasn't like I'm thinking, but there are people that are on earth that need to hear this. And it, it wasn't that. I was so focused on Jesus, I didn't want anything else, nothing else. And, and, and so that's the reason why they just used the one word no. They understood that's what it is. God understood that I was not going to want to leave. And they understood, they just wanted to give me that knowledge, that understanding that I needed to come back because it wasn't for me, just for me. It was for others too. It was for our brothers and sisters. It was for the lost. It was for all of those 
who need to be able to turn back on the fire underneath them and be ready, watching and waiting for their Lord to appear. And that's really the reason for it, Randy. Mm. So, and you were falling back. Uh, was it kind of a uh, like a reel in reverse or did you instantly awake uh, through this not uh, at all. falling backwards? Not at all. So as I'm coming down uh, and I start, before I go into the funnel, into the tunnel, I turn around where I'm watching where I'm going feet first, right? And so I enter back into the tunnel and all of the angels, they're still there all around and they're still, you can still feel and hear their excitement. You can still hear their chatter as they're, you know, like talking to each other and, and, uh, and, and all of that. And I'm going through and then uh, ultimately then uh, I, I come out of the other end of the funnel, the one that I had originally come into, out into earth space. And I'm going through space, I'm passing galaxies, and then I come into our solar system and I recognize some of the planets that have gone by. And then I encounter Earth. It's mm. right in front of me. And this big blue marble is hanging out in space. And I am just struck by the beauty of it. I had never, I had never contemplated. I've always wanted to be able to have an opportunity to see the Earth from that vantage point but I never had any idea. And when I was looking at it through my spiritual eyes, the, this beautiful blue globe that's hanging out in this pristine black space, it was just, it was beautiful. And I just will never forget that. Never forget that, I just can't. And I'm just like awed by it while I'm going directly towards it. And so I'm still going in. Now, again, all of this is happening at an incredible speed. But because of this superhero uh, sense that I have, uh, and I, I think really all of our senses are so heightened, and, it, and, and you're in the spiritual realm, which is actually so much more real than our life here on earth. It is hyper real. It is so much higher. It is so much bigger. It is so much more expansive. It is, there's just so much more to it. Colors, sound, you, you name it. That it's just, there's no way to be able to measure the difference from that spiritual reality to this one. And so, uh, so I'm looking at the earth and I'm going to it and I'm just seeing it. I'm just my eyes, if they could get as big as dinner plates, they would. Wow. And so I'm going back towards the earth. I'm going back through the cloud layers and I, I can see just the, the whole landmass of North America and I'm going down. And then I, you know, I'm, I can see that I'm going into the area where Texas is and I get in through there and then I'm coming in and I'm at the, just, uh, uh, just under the, the final cloud layer and I can see uh, Linda. She's still sitting on this curb and she's looking up and she's watching me come in. I'm, I'm uh, intrigued by Linda who she was. Yeah. Did, did you ever get an answer as to who? I was? never got an answer. I really didn't. But I can tell you this, if anything else, and, and I, I, I've wondered, and this is my thoughts about it. She pointed me to Jesus. And so that's the ultimate thing. So the message wasn't about her, as none of it was. It was all about him. And, and so I'm, I'm 
thankful for that. So it was the introduction. I'm sure that when we're back there, just like I recognized her, I will know who she is. And uh, also, I also recognize that when we are transformed into those immortal bodies, I'm also going to have that memory is going to return of all of that knowledge and things that I've had. That's all going to be back. But for right now, for his purpose, I just know that he needed to keep certain things out of my memory and be focused on the one thing, and that's him. That's what I would say about that. So, it's a, so. as you explained it, Wayne, the uh, the depth of uh, understanding or the words, the answers, what have you, uh, that the Lord had provided to you, but you had said something to the effect of that that was contained within that experience that you had in heaven, not to be fully realized here on earth. Sure. But uh, sounds like you're uh, believing, and I believe that once you're ushered back into heaven, that uh, that you'll have that same epiphany and, and, and understanding. Yeah, well, and, and it was. That's so true because I understood that he was keeping that knowledge from me, that I wasn't, when I say it, I wasn't allowed to come back with that knowledge. And after some time, and, you know, when I tell you the end of this, of, of course, I can jump through, and I know at least some of the reasons why. There's, there's several that, that all relate to this, but one of them is because it would be so difficult on me in this life to be here and have all of that knowledge, all of that remembrance of an experience of heaven and all of that that's connected with God. And to be here, it would just be incredibly difficult for me to continue to do that. As it is, when I came back for the longest time, and even today, Randy, I'm so homesick. I'm so mm -hmm. homesick to be back there. And, and, and I know I've got this purpose, and I'm doing that, and I'm fulfilling that, and I want people to know about Jesus, and that's what he wanted me to tell them. But yes, it's hard, even with what I came back with. It's still so difficult because of that homesickness. I know that's where I'm at. So I can recognize if I had all that knowledge, I probably would not be able to continue. I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm. So, uh, and, and so understanding, but there's also another reason for it. And I'll tell you in just a second. Um, it's because the certain knowledge about his return and everything else. Remember, I'd only been saved a week. And so one of the other reasons was for me to get into his word. I needed to have it in me. I needed to understand it. If I was going to know more about him, that book, that's him. That's him in printed form. That's Jesus. And so if I'm going to find out these things that he's wanting me to, uh, to know and understand, I've got to do that. So it's a part of me. And, uh, and, and so that's what I did. And, and I prayed for the longest time, you know, uh, write your word on the tablet of my heart. That I might not sin against you. And, mm -hmm. and so that's, I've, I've said that so many, many times. And that's what I wanted. I put, take this, take this word, just open up my chest, put it in there mm -hmm. and lock it up in there. I mm -hmm. want that. And, uh, and so that's one of the things, because when I came back, 
I had a voracious appetite for the word. I read the Bible cover to cover. I couldn't stop. I had a pen in one hand and I'm going like, okay, oh, okay, yeah, that's what he was meaning about this. And oh, yes, my goodness, that I, I understand that now. Uh, you know, and I was just nonstop, nonstop. So, but I haven't quite got there yet. So <laughs> here I'm on my way back. And this return is just as exciting as the initial part of it. So I'm coming in, but I'm not coming down by Linda. I'm actually coming down over the house. Hmm. I didn't know why yet, but I'm coming in. And so, like I said, with the vision that I have, I go through the roof. I can see all of the individual uh, shingles on the roof. I can see the grain from the shingles because I'm going by it and my eyes are right there going through it. I'm into the attic space and I can see the, the wood, the rafters and the insulation that fills everything up. I can actually see the pink from the insulation as I go through the insulation mm. and I then end up going, you know, through the ceiling and even the, uh, and that's what I say is that in, in this older house that we were in, the, there's a, a, a roof treatment that they call popcorn. If you're familiar, it's a, it's an acoustic yes. ceiling treatment. And I remember that because I, my eyes were just right there as it, as I go through the ceiling. But again, it's happening so fast, but it doesn't matter because I'm with this superhero senses that I have, I'm able to be able to just differentiate all of these details. And then I look down and, and I can see again, of course, I'm coming in feet first. Denise, she's still lying there on the bed. There's my dead body is still lying there. And I come in and my feet enter right in my chest. It's right in through there. And because I'm going so fast, there is a point where my body connects or locks in to uh, my spirit and body connect. And it is such a powerful connection and I'm just liking it to the speed I'm coming in and is wham into my body. It's with such power from that connection that my physical body is actually catapulted from the bed, boom, over, over the end of the bed, out into the middle of our bedroom onto the floor where I land with a thud face down, hitting my chest first, boom. Wow. That's what woke Denise up, okay? So, so you're lifted up, literally lifted up and flattened on the ground. Yes. Face yes. face first. Boom, and, I, and, and, and yes, face first. Just And what was wow. interesting about it, and I thought about this later, there, I make this contact uh, with my chest, boom. And I would have thought because, you know, this limp body, as it makes that contact that, you know, I could have injured anything and any other, there was no injury. I didn't hit my head or anything. It seemed like the contact was absorbed by my chest. And so I went, boom. And so I'm facing away from the bed because it had, catapulted me this way I boom lock and as soon as I hit the floor suddenly I'm in pain again and but mm. this pain is different it's it's a burning pain it's 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 like this just like after an injury you know where you get this residual type of, of pain that happens and that's, that's what it was feeling like. And I wasn't able to speak or anything quite yet. And I am 
crawling on the floor because I don't have a lot of strength. I'm crawling, I turn around. Now at the same time, Denise, she's startled up awake because she heard me go bam out there in the center of the floor. Mm. Well, she wakes up and, but it's dark and she can't see me. And so at the same time, I have turned around and I'm crawling to the edge of the bed. I'm trying to catch her attention. And I reach up and I reach over and I grab her foot at the end of the bed. She lets out this <gasps> start because it startled her, right? And she looks down at me and she says, Wayne. And all I can get out, I muster all the strength that I can at that moment. And I say, I just met God. And her eyes get as big as dinner plates. And she says, what? <laughs> I say it again. I just met God. And then I collapsed on the floor. I didn't have any more strength left. I just, it's just all, all of that. Well, she ends up, of course, uh, she immediately jumps up and she runs uh, around the, the, the bed and she gets down beside me. And it would, it would take a, a, another whole type of section to be able to follow up. But I ended up, of course, telling her the very first person I see the entire story. And then I ended up, I, she, she had made this one comment, I'll have to tell you this. She's, she has this concern on her face, Randy. And she, she said, honey, I think you've had a heart attack. I need to call the ambulance. I need to, you need to go to the hospital. And I said, maybe, no. No, I, I can't do that. I just, I, ha I, don't, I don't have any strength. I need to get some rest. And, and then she was starting to argue with me about it because she was so concerned. And she said, but what if you have another heart attack? What if you die for good mm -hmm. this time and you don't come back? And I just looked at her and I said, I smiled and I said, baby, Jesus is not going to send me back just to have me die again. <laughs> and she That's looked at me and she said, okay. Well, I ended up, of course, just uh, to cut it short, I did end up going to the, uh, the clinic th that morning when it opened. And it, it's, it, it's another whole uh, story in itself. Of course, it's posted on the website. You can follow it up if you want, but uh, to save time, but effectively, I told the doctors, I told the nurses, I told the staff, I told the PAs, I told the people in the waiting room, I told everyone. <laughs> and I can tell you that my doctor listened to every single word. Mm. And so what he did is he did all of these tests. He, he, he did an, uh, some type of enzyme test. I, I, I don't pretend to be a doctor. He wanted to take my blood, which he said would be able to de determine whether or not I had a heart attack. He wanted to do uh, an ECG on me, uh, electrocardiogram. He wanted to do a stress test and, and some other things to be able to evaluate my heart. Well, while we were waiting for these emergency blood tests to be able to come back, he, he ends up, uh, I, I'm still, I'm getting people asking, they, they have questions. Do you mind if we ask you some questions? No, not at all. And I'm happy to answer them. Well, when the test results come in and I'm doing all of that, doctor comes in, he's got his arms crossed like this, and he's got this huge Cheshire grin on his face. And he says, well, Mr. Fowler, it appears that you have had a massive heart attack. He said, but all of the tests show there is absolutely nothing wrong with your heart. Wow. 
Wow. And I looked at him and I grinned and I shook my head knowingly. He did tell me, I said, uh, perhaps uh, I told him at one point, perhaps now you have a story you can tell your colleagues. And, uh, and he said, Mr. Fowler, I believe you. And that really kind of says it all, Randy. And wow. that's from that moment, and I have not stopped. And here we are, we're on YouTube, and we're able to try to reach a, a, a broad audience. We're reaching people all over the world. And I'm just thinking, I could not have imagined back in 1989, when this happened to me, that this could ultimately be the way that he could continue to receive glory and people could be changed and impacted. But I'm so thankful for it. And so many have, Wayne, will, I will say now as we're talking here and have as we're, li they've been listening to this and uh, who better uh, to pray for uh, those who do not or uh, question whether they have a relationship with Jesus as Savior and Lord than, than uh, those who uh, have met him and know him. And so I'd it's an, an incredible account. And thank you for going into uh, detail. I know there are people that are watching this right now, uh, and some of them, when, it, when it's uh, recorded, uh, will bring their loved ones to watch this. Uh, will you lead uh, us into a prayer of salvation uh, so that when that day rises, when uh, someone leaves or the person leaves this world, uh, that that person will be confident that they're going to see what you saw. It would be privileged to do that, Randy. Thank you. Right now, Heavenly Father, I want to just thank you and praise you for this opportunity to be able to deliver the message of your dear son, Jesus. And, and so right now, I just want to reach out and, and I want to I want to reach out to those people. As Randy said, if you're watching this message right now and you don't know Jesus, I understand because you see, I've been there. I've been there. And so if you're questioning, if you're wondering, I just want you to just give, give the thought to Jesus, because having been there, I reached out, and I said yes to him, and I met him in person. I met him face to face, and you can do that too. You can meet Jesus, and you can have him come into your heart. You can experience uh, a rebirth. You can experience a new you. How can you do that? How can you, how can you come and experience the lover of your soul? Jesus loves you. He loves you more than you could possibly know. And so this is what I would ask you to do. I would ask you, just follow along with me. This is what I did. Jesus, I believe that you are real. I believe that you are the son of God. And I believe that you went to that cross and you suffered and died on that cross just for me. And I believe that you rose again, that you rose from that grave on the third day. And I'm asking you, Jesus, to come into my heart right now. I'm asking you to take control of my life. It's not my life anymore. It's yours. Because I know 
that you can make such a wonderful life out of it. You can do so much better than I can. And I trust you to do that. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm thanking you. If you have, you've prayed that now, you've believed that Jesus is the Lord of your life. If you've done that, then I'm asking you to be able to go and, and to tell someone, to understand this is going to be the start of the new life for you. Understand that Jesus is coming back so soon. So I would encourage you to get into the word. I would encourage you to search it as I did, to find out about when he's coming back, to find uh, a, a church group, to find people that, are, that understand the word, that can help to show you, that will fellowship with you. You can do that. And I also want to speak to Christians that know the Lord. And I am yes. encouraging you right now, turn yes. your heart back to the Lord. If you have been yes. lukewarm, this is the time to turn that fire up on high, brothers and sisters. Yes. Do yes. that now because yes. he's coming back for a church that has that, that they first loved. He's coming back for that. Look back to your first love. Turn yes. that fire up. And be able to go out and, and, to, and to just recognize that he is coming back. He's coming back yes. for a people that are watching and waiting for him. Yes. Do that now. And we pray in agreement for that. And Father, I am believing that we are receiving answers to those prayers right now. And we give you all the praise and glory yes. for it. Praise you, Lord. In Jesus' yes. name. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Wayne. And for our audience that would like to uh, stay in touch with Wayne, we're going to give you his contact information on the body of this YouTube. We'll have audio as well uh, that you can reference, and there'll be other channels that we will reference uh, in that body as well that you can access uh, this interview. You can share it. Uh, with uh, the ones that you care for uh, so that they can watch this as well. And uh, also to announce, we're going to have uh, the Afterlife 2022 conference. It's an online conference that we'll be giving uh, more information to you if you'd like, uh, April 8th and 9th. And I believe Wayne uh, will be joining. The plan is for Wayne to join us uh, during this online conference where we will have a number of speakers who can share the love of Jesus. Uh, many, uh, most who have had encounters with heaven, uh, some even with hell. So uh, please stay tuned. If you did pray that prayer uh, for the first time, or maybe the second time, but you feel that, you know, this is, you, you, something has changed and you has changed with Wayne, Maybe not that dramatically, but maybe so. Uh, please, uh, we'll give you a contact uh, page you can go to. Let us know uh, that you prayed that prayer so we can stay in touch with you. Also, we encourage you to find a church if you don't have one that believes in the Bible, the Word of God. So find that. Uh, there are lots of them, no doubt, in your area that you can go to. Pick one out uh, and get involved so that you can have a community of believers to, uh, to stay in fellowship with uh, as you grow in Christ during this walk with Jesus. So, Wayne, I want to say thank you so much, my friend and brother and compadre and this experience of the afterlife. I did want to make one final note. Um, and I hope you don't mind my sharing, but your beloved wife, Denise, is in heaven today. Uh, so she is uh, experiencing those things that you have just uh, recounted. And I know a number of us have lost loved ones. And, uh, and there are many here that are listening and watching that have lost loved ones. So 
um, we'll be with them again. So again, thank you so much, Wayne. Any parting words before we go? Jesus is Lord, and it's all about him. And I am so blessed to have been able to, uh, to meet him. I am so blessed to be a part of the family. And I am just encouraging more people to become a part of that family, to join us, to join us, because that's what he wants. And I just, I, I'm just so blessed to be a part of that. I'm privileged to do it. That's all. Again, thank you so much, Wayne. God bless you and God bless all of you. Until next time, we say the Lord is with you. Be blessed. Take care.